All right. So you know how everyone's getting ready for Halloween. We're going to take a deep dive into it. But like from a different angle kind of uh, perspective, a lot of people maybe don't think about too much. Mm -hmm. Our listener wrote in wanting to explore, you know, potential dangers they see in Halloween. Yeah. Specifically for Christians. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And we've got some really interesting sources to help us do that. Okay. We're going to be looking at like a warning from a Spanish priest. <laughs> okay. Not, yeah. a devotional article too that kind of lays out, you know, some biblical reasons why Christians might want to like reconsider their approach to Halloween. Okay. So like from a faith perspective. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. So to kick things off, let's jump into this first source. It's from Father Javier Ortega. Oh, okay. Now, this priest, he uh, doesn't really sugarcoat things. Mm -hmm. He's concerned that all the Halloween costumes, like, you know, demons and witches and zombies. Right. He thinks they might be more than just harmless dress up. Really? Yeah. He suggests that they could actually be tempting the devil. And even, like, opening a door to negative spiritual influences. Okay. So, to be clear, tempting the devil, not, like, literally you know challenging him to a duel or something more okay. like the idea that like engaging with these symbols of evil yeah. even in a playful way could maybe make us more open to those influences exactly yeah. it's not that we think a kid in a ghost costume is going to summon a spirit or anything right but it's more about you know the potential for those images to impact us on a deeper level maybe even subconsciously subconsciously yeah yeah that makes sense father ortega even uses this analogy he's like Playing with fire might burn you. Yeah. Just like dabbling in the occult might have some, yeah. you know, unintended consequences. Mm. That's a pretty powerful comparison. It is. And it really makes you think, right? Like, yeah. how much risk are we actually comfortable with, even in the name of fun? You right. Know? Like, I'm cautious about things like, you know, trying a crazy stunt mm. or yeah. investing in some risky stock. But do I ever stop and think about those same kinds of risks when it comes to the spiritual realm? Mm. I see what you mean. Yeah, this deep dive is definitely making me think about that for sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Like, are we as careful with our spiritual well-being as we are with our physical or financial well-being? Right. And that seems to be at the heart of Father Ortega's warning. Yeah, he's basically saying even if we approach Halloween with totally innocent intentions, we might be overlooking this whole other layer of, you know, spiritual implications. Okay, so maybe we're ditching the demon costume this year. Ah. But what about all that candy? Surely that can't be evil, right? Well, that's where our second source comes in. Okay. This devotional article, it dives into a bunch of biblical reasons why some Christians choose to just skip Halloween completely. Interesting. Yeah, it lays out like six specific points. Okay. But what's really interesting is it doesn't just focus on like avoiding evil. It emphasizes this idea of making sure our actions line up with our beliefs. Right. So it's less about saying, don't do this. Yeah. And more about taking a step back and thinking about exactly. what are we actually celebrating? Yeah. And does it fit with our Christian faith? Exactly. Yeah. And one of the most like compelling arguments it makes is this idea that Halloween celebrates the exact opposite of what Jesus represents. Oh, wow. Like life and light and victory over death. Mm, that's quite a contrast. Isn't it? You've got Halloween with all its like tombstones and skeletons and fake blood. Yeah. And then you've got Christianity with its focus on resurrection and hope. It's a pretty powerful juxtaposition for sure. It is. And it really makes you think, you know, even seemingly harmless holiday traditions, like what kind of messages are we absorbing from them? Right. And are those messages sending us in the right direction? Exactly. Remember what Father Ortega was saying about, you know, potential consequences? Yeah. This article takes that a step further. Yeah. It's not just about what we avoid, but like what are we actively choosing to celebrate? That's a good point. Right? And it's not just about us as individuals either, is it? No, it's not. The article talks specifically about being careful about what we expose our children to. Especially kids, yeah. Especially when it comes to, you know, the imagery and the themes of Halloween. Absolutely. Like... Are we being mindful of the messages our kids are internalizing, even through something that seems as innocent as a Halloween party, you know? Hmm. That's a big responsibility. It is. It's suggesting that as Christian parents, we have a responsibility to think about whether those messages line up with the values we're trying to teach our kids. I see. Right. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And it's not all doom and gloom. The article doesn't just leave us with a list of don'ts. Oh, good. Right. It actually offers some alternative ways to celebrate. OK. Like what? Like things like harvest festivals, family Bible studies, even acts of service for the community. Hmm. 
Interesting. What do you think about those? Do they seem like good alternatives to the traditional Halloween stuff? That's a great question. You know, for you, our listener, do those resonate with you? Do those feel like fun and meaningful ways to celebrate? Or do they feel like they're missing that excitement that Halloween usually brings? It's a personal choice for sure. Yeah. But definitely something worth reflecting on. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I think is so interesting about this whole deep dive is that it's not telling anyone what to do. Right. It's more like shining a light on a different perspective. You know, mm-hmm. just inviting us to think a little deeper about our own choices and traditions. Exactly. I think that's the real heart of this whole exploration. Yeah. Encouraging people to think critically and really understand how their faith interacts with their culture. And sometimes that interaction happens in the most unexpected places. Right. Like even something as simple as Halloween. Exactly. And for those of you who are curious about those six biblical reasons, yeah. we can dive into those in more detail after a quick break. Sounds good. So stick with us. You know, It's kind of wild to think about how something like Halloween, which feels so secular, can spark these deep theological discussions. Like it shows how tricky it can be to navigate faith in the modern world. It really does. So, okay, let's break down these six biblical reasons the article gives for maybe thinking twice about Halloween. All right. The first one is all about Halloween's roots in paganism. Right. The article traces it way back to ancient Celtic festivals like Samhain, Mm -hmm. which had all these rituals and beliefs that, from a Christian perspective, you know, wouldn't exactly line up with worshiping God. I see. So it makes you wonder, even though Halloween has changed so much over the centuries, are there still pieces of those pagan origins that might be a concern for Christians today? Mm, That's a good point. Okay. Especially since most people probably don't even think about that historical context when they're out trick-or-treating. Exactly. It's just become so normal. Right. And that actually leads right into the second reason. Okay. The idea that Halloween promotes occult practices. Okay. Before we go any further, I think it's important to define what we mean by occult. Yeah. Good point. Because for some people, it might bring to mind, you know, witches and seances. Right. But more broadly, it refers to any practice that tries to access hidden knowledge or supernatural powers outside of, you know, the Christian faith. Exactly. And the article argues that even if we aren't literally doing these things, you know, casting spells or whatever, Halloween's focus on witches and ghosts and fortune telling it kind of normalizes these concepts Mm -hmm. and maybe even desensitizes us to their spiritual implications. So even if I'm not out there casting spells myself just by participating in Halloween, I could be contributing to a broader acceptance of those practices. Exactly. Which might not sit well with some Christians. That's the gist of their argument. Okay, that makes sense. What, what, What's the third reason? So the third reason is about Halloween's glorification of fear and death. Okay, this one seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. You know, you got spooky decorations, haunted houses, costumes designed to scare people. How does the article reconcile that with, you know, a faith that's all about hope and resurrection? Well, it argues that while fear is a natural human emotion, you know, we all feel it sometimes. Halloween takes it and makes it like the main event, almost like a form of entertainment. Okay. And it says, this goes against the Christian message of overcoming fear through faith in Christ. So it's not that all fear is bad. No, not at all. But that Halloween might be distorting our view of it. Right. By making light of something that from a Christian viewpoint should be treated with more, you know, reference. Exactly. Okay, number four. All right, number four gets a little more intense. It claims that Halloween promotes the worship of demonic figures. Okay, now this is where things could get a little controversial. Definitely. I mean, some people might just dismiss this as, you know, taking things too literally or even superstitious. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What does the article say? Yeah, what's their reasoning here? Well, it basically argues that even though most people see Halloween costumes as harmless fun, Dressing up as demons or devils or other figures associated with evil, yeah. it could be seen as a form of mockery. Uh. Or even remember Father Ortega's warning, like a, a way of inviting those negative influences in. So it goes back to that idea of being careful about what we expose ourselves to. Exactly. Even if it's just playful, there might be a deeper spiritual side to it. Okay, I'm following you. What's number five? All right, number five kind of connects back to the historical roots. Okay. It says that celebrating Halloween is a way of compromising with paganism. So it's building on that first point. Exactly. Like, even if we don't believe in those pagan beliefs anymore, by participating in a holiday with those origins, Mm -hmm. we're blurring the lines between our Christian faith and practices that are fundamentally opposed to it. Mm. It's like that whole in the world but not of it 
idea. Uh, exactly. It's a tough one to navigate. It is for sure. Oh. All right. What's the final reason? Okay. Number six, it focuses on the missed opportunity for Christian witness. It argues that by doing all the Halloween stuff, Christians are using time and energy that could be spent sharing their faith or serving others. So it's not just about what we're avoiding, but what we could be doing instead. Exactly. It's about being intentional with our time and resources and making sure they align with our values as Christians. That's a good point. Yeah. I like that the article doesn't just present these concerns. Right. You know. Right. It offers some alternatives. Absolutely. We've touched on them a little bit already. Hardest festivals, family Bible studies, acts of service. Uh, but I'm curious to explore those a bit more and see if they really measure up to the excitement of Halloween. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's dive into those and see if they offer a compelling alternative. Okay, let's start with harvest festivals. They seem pretty popular. They are. They often include fall-themed activities and food and games. Right. And from a Christian perspective, they offer a way to celebrate God's creation and give thanks for the blessings of the harvest. I see. It shifts the focus away from the spooky stuff and towards gratitude and community. Yeah, you can still have pumpkin carving and hay rides and apple picking and all that fun fall stuff. Exactly. Just without the ghosts and goblins. Right. And a lot of churches incorporate a faith element into these festivals. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's a way to celebrate the season in a way that aligns with Christian values. Okay, that makes sense. What about family Bible studies? Well, instead of telling scary stories, the article suggests families gather together and explore Bible passages about light overcoming darkness. Okay. Good. Triumphing over evil, the hope of resurrection. I can see how that could be really meaningful. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially for families wanting to ground their celebration in their faith. Exactly. But I imagine it might take some creativity to make it engaging for kids. Oh, absolutely. It's not about just reading the Bible. You yeah. know, yeah. it's about finding ways to make those stories come alive through discussions or activities or even art projects. Right. Help them really connect with the message. Exactly. Okay. And lastly, what about acts of service? How would that work as a Halloween alternative? Well, instead of going door to door for candy, mm -hmm. the article suggests that families could use that time to serve their communities. I like that. Yeah, like volunteering at a soup kitchen, visiting a nursing home, even just doing something kind for a neighbor. Yeah, that's a great idea. It really <laughs> changes the focus from what we can get to how we can help others. Exactly. And yeah. it fits perfectly with that Christian idea of loving your neighbor. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we've looked at the six biblical reasons and some potential alternatives. Yeah. But before we wrap up, I think it's really important to acknowledge that there are also many Christians who don't see Halloween as a problem. Right. And they choose to participate without feeling like they're compromising their faith. Absolutely. There are a lot of different opinions within Christianity on this. Yeah. And it's important to respect those different views. Definitely. At the end of the day, the decision of how to approach Halloween is a personal one. It is. The most important thing is that we each think about it carefully, pray about it, and make a choice that feels right for us. That's a great way to put it. And that's really what this whole deep dive has been about. It's mm -hmm. not about telling anyone what's right or wrong. Right. It's about giving you the information and the different perspectives so you can make an informed decision. And even if you disagree with some of what we've talked about. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just having this conversation can help us understand our own faith better. Absolutely. And how it shapes our lives. All right. So now for the big question for you, our listener. Yes. After hearing all this. What resonates with you? Where do you land on this? Do you lean more towards the cautionary side or do you see Halloween as a harmless tradition? We'd love to hear your thoughts as we move into the last part of this deep dive where we'll explore some bigger picture ideas and leave you with some final food for thought. Okay, so we've really gone deep on Halloween, haven't we? We have. We've heard Father Ortega's warnings about those, you know, spiritual risks, looked at those six biblical reasons for reconsidering and even brainstorm some alternatives. It's been quite the exploration. It has. So, like, where do we even go from here? Well, I think the biggest thing this deep dive has done is spark a conversation yeah. about how our faith interacts with our culture, even in something as simple as a holiday. It's so easy to just get swept up in the fun of it all without really thinking about what we're actually celebrating. Right, and if it even lines up with what we believe. Exactly. Yeah. And I think what's so powerful about these sources is that they challenge us to move beyond just following rules mm. and really dig deep into the meaning behind what we do. It's about being intentional, right? Yeah. Not just about what we say no to, but what we say yes to. Exactly. Okay. And I think that intentionality is so key no matter what you personally think about Halloween. I agree. 
whether you decide to go all out with the traditional stuff or choose a faith-based alternative or even skip it completely, yeah, the most important thing is that your decision comes from a place of you know, conviction and understanding of your faith. Absolutely. And that's where this whole deep dive comes back around. It's not about saying this is right or this is wrong. No, not at all. It's about giving you, our listener, the tools to make a decision that feels right for you. And even if you don't agree with everything we've talked about, right. just having this conversation can help us all grow in our faith. Absolutely. Yeah. And how we live it out in the real world. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with one last thought to chew on. Okay. If we truly believe that our choices, you know, the things we do have spiritual consequences. Uh -huh. How does that change, not just our view of Halloween, but like how we live every single day? That's such a great question. It's not just about one holiday. It's about our whole lives. Exactly. So thank you for joining us on this journey. We hope it's been eye-opening and encouraging as you navigate, you know, this whole intersection of faith and culture. It's definitely a complex one. It is, but it's also really fascinating. Thanks for being here.